Oh, I thought it was wonderful. <laughs> Anna Maria was like heaven. And there was only about 10 children on the whole island. We children were just like one big family. We just, we had the run of the whole island. There was only about 10 houses when I first came there and all these dirt roads. There wasn't much mischief to get into. But the beach was so beautiful. Uh, the, the Gulf side was just gorgeous. You could stand down by the sandbar, which they have now, and look all the way down to Bradenton Beach, and you could see all the way down the beach in great big, wide, sandy, beautiful beaches, and uh, not a thing on there. And like you could see a dog walking on the beach or anything walking on the beach, a human being walking on the beach, you could see that too. And oh, it was so great to go swimming. We spent a lot of time in that golf. Oh, my name is Lorraine Rye. It used to be Chamber, S-C-H-A-M-B-E-R. I was born in Buffalo, New York in 1922. Uh, I came to Anna Maria in 1924. So my grandmother, her name was Chamber, and uh, she started the first hotel, or boarding house, I should say, Manatee County. Uh, my mother was one of the first women in the WAAC's, Women's Auxiliary Army Corps. And uh, she went to war. Oh, my mother had the mail route. Longboat Key used to be part of Manatee County because when we carried the mail, we had to make a boat to take the mail across from the south end of Braden Beach to Longboat Key. She had, a, I think, a, either one of the first 32 Fords or it had an end gate on it and uh, t on Saturday night and take all of the, the children around the area, the movies. My daddy just, just did about anything he could, and, and in those days uh, work wasn't too good, and so he was in more or less in construction, and he just did whatever he needed to do to make a living. He built houses. I know three that are still standing. Dad couldn't find any work because there wasn't anything to do on Anna Maria, and uh, he had to walk to town. The Great Depression was terrible. I remember I was seven years old in 1929 when we had the crash. I remember Mom telling me that people were jumping out of windows and killing themselves because they had lost all their money. There was weeks that we didn't have any food except we had uh, what we could find on the island, which was mangoes and mulberries and, let's see, we had sea grapes and we went clamming or we'd go oystering or we'd try to go fishing and use one of those poor little old fiddlers to catch a fish. <laughs> and on one of the roads, the the whole road would look like it was red because all the fiddlers were in the road. There were so many fiddlers that we would walk through and they'd just go shh, and open a path for you down the line. We used to sit on the beach and on the bay side and watch them go down their hole. One would come out and he'd make a signal and somebody else would go down and run it out in that hole. <laughs> and then they'd come back out and they really were uh, they were interesting creatures. We watched them all the time. And of course, then we hated to stick a hook in them and go fishing with them. We didn't want to hurt the fiddlers. What we did, we took a pin. We couldn't afford a penny for a hook, so we would take a pin and bend it, try to make a hook out of it, and put a fiddler on it and go down and kick it. The only thing that would bite a fiddler was a sheep head, so that's what we ate. <laughs> or if the Cortez fishermen came along, they would pull a net up onto the beach, would uh, give us fish then because they knew that we were hungry. And so it was wonderful to get, get a good old mullet. Well, I've been a lifeguard all my life. I never quit. I can still swim. Still, that and if I couldn't do anything, I could float. I could probably sleep on the water. Well, I took life-saving lessons. Uh, by the time I was 10 years old, I was qualified 
to be a lifeguard, but they wouldn't give me a license un until I think I was 11 or 12. After we took all these life-saving sa lessons, Red Cross uh, built us a tower, and we set off a certain area, which is now Manatee County Beach, advertised in the newspaper that we, we would have a lifeguard out there if somebody wanted to go out to the beach and swim. That's how Manatee County Beach started. There was only about four or five of us then that were lifeguards, and Bob Zubrod, who wrote the book for lifeguards for the Red Cross, came down and actually gave us lessons. And oh, if and you want to know about the sand, uh, the shifting sands on Anna Maria. And about every 20 years, you have to live there a long time to do this or notice it, uh, I noticed that the paths at uh, the north end of the island by Egmont Key would get smaller and we'd have a great big beautiful beach there. Uh, and then 20 years later it would be so swift up there and short that th there was no beach and it was all vegetation and the sand would be down on the south end and nearly close up that end between uh, Longboat Key and Anna Maria. Well, then they put out jetties and stuff, and people were allowed to build beyond the vegetation line. And uh, I think people should never be able to build beyond the vegetation line because that's public access. Jetties and things, I'm strictly against them. During the World War II, we set up a tower on the north end of the beach on the Gulf side. We watched uh, for submarines and we, we reported, I think it was to um, St. Petersburg, and we reported all airplanes, all activity for submarines, particularly submarines we were on the watch. And that was a 24-hour watch. So we, we had a regular shifts up there and we would sit in that tower, no lights, were allowed on the island anything after dark. We were afraid to, that a light could be seen. We have the sandbar at Anna Maria. Well, years ago, that used to be a very large building, and it was just a great big square building, and it had living quarters in the back, and a little bar area that had a ping pong table, so we learned to play ping pong, and I love to play ping pong. But they also had the biggest dance floor in all of the area, and everybody came to Anna Maria Island to dance on that floor. On the weekends, uh, they would uh, hire an orchestra or a band, and people would come from St. Petersburg, They'd come from Bradenton, they'd come from Tampa, they'd come from all around just to do dancing on that floor because it was so beautiful. Very few women in that time were able to get a loan. I worked for the state, I'd been working for the state for so long, so I had a good reputation for paying my bills. Johnny Holmes was president of Manatee Federal at that time. So I went to Johnny Holmes to see if he would give me a loan to help me build my first house. And um, he, knew that, he knew that I paid my bills and uh, was responsible. So he helped me get an FHA loan. And uh, that was something that they didn't give women loans in those days. <laughs> and so I built that house on Anna Maria. And, and, um, oh, I love that house. Well, the whole island was interesting, and memories uh, just come all the time, honey, about, di about different things. I don't disagree with this world today, mm -hmm. but to me it's not as nice as it used to be. Well, Anna Maria was, was my home. That's why I always came back to this area. And I don't think Hawaii or any other beach has any prettier sand. I still think that the sands on Anna Maria Island are the prettiest in the whole world. Anna Maria was a spot that I just adored.
And of course, growing up there, maybe that's the reason I feel that way. I don't know, but it's close to my heart. I just, I just can't say enough about the island. I'm glad that I was reared on Anna Marie Island.